my prayer let come before you if you kept record of my sin and held against me what I've been how could I stand before you has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Savior and from our Lord Jesus Christ, fellow children of God. Do you know what it feels like when you're sitting in the dark and someone turns on the light without warning? Maybe you're sitting there in the morning before everybody else is up just sitting on a cup of coffee. Or maybe like Jesus in our lesson from last week who went off by himself to pray while it was still dark. And when the light goes on, all of a sudden, it's too bright. Close your eyes. You you put your hands up in front of your face. You can't hardly see anything. and, And you have to squint until finally it takes a little bit of time for your eyes to adjust. Well, in our gospel lesson for this morning, it seems like the disciples experienced something very similar to that. Now, for them, it was already daylight. But they would see something incredible, something even brighter than the daylight. We read in Mark's gospel, Then Jesus was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. We can picture the disciples holding up their hands, squinting their eyes, turning away, because there was just a portion of Jesus' glory. And and did their eyes ever really adjust or did they have to watch Jesus through squinted eyes the whole time? And and when that, that brightness of Christ's glory was there in front of them, the gospel lesson also tells us that they were frightened. And we can understand that. Because sinful people living in a sinful world tend to blend in, but when you're standing next to the righteousness of God, to the light of Christ's glory, boy, all of a sudden you see all your sins all the more. And you understand how insignificant you really are. Well, even though we weren't there on that day of transfiguration up on the mountain with the other disciples, we see that God continues to let the light of his glory shine in our lives. In fact, our our lesson for this morning tells us that the light shines in the darkness. And even though we live in a sin darkened and a sin corrupted world, Christ has come to let the light of his grace shine in our lives. He comes to us through the word and sacraments. And as we look at our lesson, we see that the God of this age wants to keep the world in darkness. But Jesus Christ is the one who shines as the light of the gospel. Uh, We turn again to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and there Paul writes, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. This is the word of our Lord. Now, when the Israelites were at Mount Sinai, they didn't want to talk to God face to face. They they, they saw a glimpse of his glory and and they said, all right, Moses, you go and talk to God for us. And that's exactly what Moses did. And much like the disciples in our gospel lesson for this morning, God revealed a glimpse of his glory to Moses. In fact, that glory of God rubbed off on Moses. Moses. So that when he came down from Mount Sinai, he he put a veil over his face to keep the people from seeing that glory. We're told in the book of Exodus, whenever Moses entered the Lord's presence to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what had been commanded, they saw that his face was radiant. Then Moses would put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with the Lord again. Now, in the words of our lesson, Paul uses that picture from the Old Testament, from Exodus, about the veil that covered Moses' face, that hid the glory of God, the radiance of God's glory from the people. And he uses that as an illustration to show what happens with people who can't see that glory of God. 
For so many, especially those who have been raised as Israelites, the veil of the law kept them from seeing the grace and, and the glory that God wanted to show them. They, they simply were blind to it. And if we think about it, really that's the way that each one of us comes into this world. By nature, we are spiritually blind. By nature, we have not understood the glory and righteousness of God. And because we, we don't see that, all we have to compare it to is, is the sin-darkened world that we have around us. And because of this, we don't always see how serious our sin is. We might look at the things that we do wrong. Well, they are just little mistakes, little slip-ups here and there. But when we go back to God's word, we see that sin is sin. There is no little sin in God's eyes. Instead, every sin, even the smallest sin, is a sin that separates us from our God. We need God to be able to show us how serious it is. We could compare it to maybe driving on a curvy mountain road. When you're driving on that road during the day, you can see, oh, the edge is right there. And you can see, well, if I go over the edge, there's nothing to stop me until I get all the way to the bottom. We can see that we're only feet or maybe even inches from, from disaster. But when we're driving in the darkness, you know, there's the edge of the road, but we don't know what's beyond it. It doesn't seem all that dangerous. And because we live in the darkness of sin, sometimes what we do wrong doesn't seem all that dangerous. We don't realize how seriously God takes every time we break one of his commandments. And yet God's word reveals to us, yeah, sin is serious. We read in the book of Ezekiel, the soul who sins is the one who will die. Every sin, regardless of whether we consider it big or small, is a sin that separates us from God. And because our human nature is veiled to that truth, doesn't realize how serious sin is, well, sometimes we can be tempted to think, well, it's a small problem that we can solve on our own. And that's especially what Paul was addressing in his letter for this morning. So many of the people that he was talking to were people who grew up under those Old Testament regulations and they were taught that their, their connection to God was based on how well they could keep God's commands and so they strove to keep all the Old Testament regulations and not only that, but they also strove to keep all the traditions of the elders which were supposed to keep them from even getting close to breaking God's, one of God's commands. But by focusing on themselves, by focusing on the law, they were putting a veil over their face. Instead of finding that relief, that comfort from God's promises, those commands just kept laying a burden heavier and heavier on them. That's why Jesus said about those who taught this way, he said, they tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. And in their zeal to save themselves, to keep God's law, the devil had pulled a veil over their eyes. Instead of seeing all the commandments as a reason for them to come before the Lord in repentance, instead of seeing all the regulations, especially when it comes to the ceremonial law, as shadows, as pictures that pointed ahead to the Savior who was coming into the world, these became a stumbling block for them. So that when Jesus did appear, well, why did they need him? They could already figure it out by themselves. They could I win salvation on his own. And so they saw Jesus, maybe he was just another prophet. Maybe he was just another one who would give them more rules to follow. And as we see in our lesson for this morning, the devil would like nothing better than to pull the veil over, over our eyes too. As we're living in this sin-darkened world, once again, we, we, we tend to minimize our sin. And when do people do things that they know they could get in trouble for? Well, when they think no one's watching, but it's dark out, 
when no one can see what they've done wrong. And our way, our human nature has a way of downplaying our sin because it simply blends in with the darkness around it. And yet God reminds us that that darkness isn't going to last forever. Uh, we read in the book of Ephesians, But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for it is light that makes everything visible. That is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. God's word is the light that shows to us the devastating effects of our sin. And that light isn't something that could come from ourselves. It has to be shined on us from the outside. God is the one who does that. And that's why Jesus came into the world. He came into this world to shine that light. Jesus came into the world to reveal the glory of God. And not only the glory of God, not only his righteousness, but also the grace of God. And Jesus did this, first of all, by showing us what God's righteousness was all about. Now, it's easy to discount our sin when we compare it to what we see in the world around us. Yet, as we go back to God's word, God doesn't tell us to be better than most of the world. He doesn't even tell us to be better than our neighbor. He says to be perfect and holy, like he is perfect and holy. Well, what does that mean? Well, that's what Jesus displayed when he was living in this world. Now, the devil tried to pull the veil over Jesus' eyes too. Remember when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, one of the temptations, the devil said, all right, I'm going to make it easy for you, Jesus. Instead of following that plan, all you have to do is bow down to me and I will give you all the kingdoms of the world. But Jesus didn't let the devil pull the veil over his eyes. He didn't give in to that temptation. And and for that matter, throughout his life, the devil went after Jesus. He was constantly tempting Jesus because if he knew that he could trick Jesus just a little bit, blind him just a little bit, that would be it. He would win the victory. But even in the face of all of those temptations, Jesus kept himself perfectly clean. He never did anything that he had to be ashamed of. He never even thought something that he would have to hide from his disciples. No, instead, Jesus lived in the perfect light of God's righteousness. Uh, In fact, what John writes about God is, is true in Jesus. He said, God is light. In him there is no darkness of all. And when we consider the perfection of Jesus, it reveals the darkness of our own sin. Because no matter how hard we try, we could never live up to that standard that Jesus displayed to us. We could never live up to Jesus' righteousness. But Jesus came not only to display the righteousness of God, but also to show us the grace of God. And that he did in his willingness to go forward with God's plan of salvation. Uh, When Jesus went forward to offer himself to be arrested, to be beaten, to be crucified... He shone the light on all those pictures that God had given in the Old Testament. He he shone the light so that we could understand that he was the fulfillment of God's laws. Because he revealed that he was the one who would be the Lamb of God, who would take away the sins of the world. He was the one who would shed the blood like the Passover lamb did, so that we could be protected from God's justice and, and, and judgment. He was the one who would give us that perfect rest that only God could provide. And along those same lines, Jesus Jesus made it clear that that temple in Jerusalem, that Old Testament temple, was only a picture of something much greater that was coming. It was a picture of how he would stand before the Lord to offer himself as the atoning sacrifice for all sins. We read in the book of Hebrews, For Christ did not enter a man-made sanctuary like the temple that was only a copy of the true one. No, he entered heaven itself now to appear for us in God's presence. 
Jesus shines light in our hearts for us to understand that our salvation could never depend on something that we could offer God, but that it depends entirely on what God was willing to offer us, on what God was willing to do for us. Now, even with this incredible message before our eyes, we could not comprehend it unless God was the one who opened our hearts. Uh, Like a light that that comes on in the middle of the night, in the middle of the darkness, it's just too bright for us to, to understand just too bright for us to wrap our minds around. Uh, That's why John wrote in the opening chapter of his gospel, in him, that is Jesus, was life. And that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. But the Holy Spirit is the one who's able to take that darkness away. The Holy Spirit is the one who's able to open our eyes, to adjust our eyes, so that we can see who Christ really is and what he was able to accomplish for us. And because the Holy Spirit is the one who has, has made this light shine in our hearts, we want to keep that focus on Jesus and on what he did. That's why the Apostle Paul wrote that they weren't preaching themselves. It wasn't all about them. But instead, it was about pointing to Jesus. And that same thing's true for us. God has let that light shine in our hearts so that we can point to Jesus. So that we can let the grace of God's love be reflected in what we say and do and in the opportunities God gives for us to share that life-giving message to share the source of our light, our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we want to continue to stay connected to that gospel so that light continues to shine in our hearts, so that our hearts can stay adjusted to the grace of God so that we can see it in every aspect of our life. And then we also want to share that message. And we do this because we know the devil's still around. He still wants to pull the veil over people's eyes. He still wants us to take our focus off of Jesus. But thanks be to God that he has let that light shine in our lives. Thanks be to God that he continues to give us the gospel in word and sacrament to strengthen our faith, to strengthen our ability to see Jesus for who he is, our Savior, our substitute, the one who has taken away our sin once and for all. May we give thanks to God because even though darkness is still all around us in this world, even though the devil still wants to pull the veil over our eyes. As Paul writes, God made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Amen. Now may this grace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You are welcome to join us at Emanuel Lutheran Church just across the street from the post office in Taylor, Arizona. On Sunday mornings, our Bible study begins at 7.30 and worship begins at 8.30. You are also welcome to a Bible study on Monday nights that begins at 5.15.
definition of religion, um, their relationship with God. By tradition, if God believes, stuff like that. It can be a variety of things. It can be a tool, it can be something that, that helps people, it can be something that's used to help people who might not necessarily be the ones who should be benefiting. For me, I've always felt that it's just kind of the energy of like the universe. Something higher to believe in, something that's bigger than just what we humans have to go through on a day to day. Most people think of restrictions. I think of boundaries. This is an opportunity to embrace how I can perhaps find a path. The point of religion overall, um, to um, basically um, to be lined up with God so you can um, you know, have a nice, good life to go to um, Jesus at the end. What if there is more to this universe that maybe we don't know how to understand and if the universe offered us even a glimmer of hope through the stories of some of these saints and people who've walked trials in the past, I could use that as a mechanism to understand my own life.